FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Faux Monday, the companion show to FOMO Sapiens, which, of course, drops a full episode every Thursday. But, of course... Today is Monday. Happy Full Monday, best day of the week. I am your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Last week, we had a really good guest on FOMO Sapiens who I just really have a lot of respect for, Catherine Hom. I hope I'm saying that right, German Hom. And she is the CEO and founder of Barabee, a weighted blanket company. And I got to tell you, so Catherine was so kind, she actually sent me uh, one of her blankets. And I have been using it ever since I got it, I guess, two or three months back. I got to tell you, it is a game changer. And I'm not, this is not an ad, by the way. So <laughs> I, I just want to let you know, I'm not being compensated for saying this stuff, but I will, I I think I've got like six of my friends to buy these things because I'm, I sleep reasonably well, don't get me wrong, but I have this thing ever since the pandemic where I will wake up you know, at like six in the morning, unable to sleep. And that's not the old way of things for me. I used to fall asleep and I would sleep, you know, till whenever I wanted. And now I wake up really early. And so what I do is I pull up the old Baraby when I need to fall back asleep and it works. It's kind of crazy how just that pressure on your body, it just like, triggers something in your brain and you just fall asleep. And so when I got back from my my trip over, over New Year's to Socotra, I was all messed up with sleeping and I would get under that blanket and I would like sleep so deep that, you know, when you sleep so deep that you wake up and you actually like, you don't even know you can function in a good way. That was me. And so I've, I've actually really found it helpful. I've been sleeping better. It's really good for naps, by the way. And, uh, and it's also kind of awesome because it's not hot. And I think that's a big kind of knock on weighted blankets. But the way this is made, I mean, it's heavy. Let me tell you something. You get under that thing and you're like, whoa, but it is not hot. And so I've enjoyed having it. It's very nice looking and all that sort of stuff. It is heavy. Like I don't want to move it from room to room because I got the 35 pounder. That's no joke. But I love it so much. I actually gave my mom one for Christmas and she is loving it. And so I, I, you know, she's always been one of these people who needs to sleep better and has found that it is, you know, it's really good. You have to adjust to it a little bit depending on who you are. I kind of just day one was like, boom, but, uh, it just does something. And, And I'd encourage everybody to think about if you have trouble sleeping or, you know, somebody who does like the weighted blanket, it's kind of like a hack. Cause it's like some people are taking sleeping pills. Like don't want to do that weighted blanket. It's like, you get the same effect, but it is all natural and it's so cozy. So that is, that's what, you know, just neither here nor there, but just my experience with the weighted blanket. Now, what I want to talk about today, now that I've told you how much I love her product is how much I love Catherine's story, right? Because, you know, this is about a risk averse kind of space. When I think about, you know, she worked for you know, the World Bank, right, the International Finance Corporation as an economist. And having done work with them, as I talked about on the episode, awesome people, super smart people. We're talking tons of PhDs and, you know, just really impressive people. But that's the kind of place where people go for life. You get a job with the World Bank. It's very prestigious. It's well paid. You know, it's cool work and smart people. And so, like, the notion that you would ever leave, it's kind of like insane. And, and in fact, our, you know, in our conversation, we kind of hit on that. The fact that when she was leaving, people were like, what? And so there's a lot of industries where people are pretty risk averse. Now, let's think about some of those. One of them is accounting. One of them is law. And why is that? Well, it's because accountants and lawyers spend their days every day looking for risk and trying to tamp it out. And so they are preconditioned to think about risk in a way that, you know, is is pretty intense. And therefore, when they're thinking about doing something entrepreneurial, they're sort of primed already to think about the risks 
more than the rewards vis-a-vis -vis other types of people who are more comfortable with risk taking. So it's just sort of part of the of the dynamics of the industry. And I think there's also tons of cultural things around this, especially in certain countries. And I used to spend a lot of time before pandemic speaking to audiences in Latin America. And for those of you who are in the region, you know, you know this. It's like your parents, if you're in Mexico or Colombia or 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 Chile, if you get a job at a big company and then you decide you want to quit that job to work at a startup, they're like, why would you do that? You have an awesome job, right? You go home to your grandmother on Christmas and you say that you quit your job to work at a startup. And she was like, well, what am I going to tell my friends at the club that my grandson or granddaughter quit their very nice job to work in some company nobody's ever heard of, right? There's just like a cultural thing. And that's not exclusive to Latin America, but it is common around the world. And in America, we sort of lionize entrepreneurship and, you know, it's so great. And so it's like so glamorous. And so it's less pervasive, but of course it happens in every country, right? Now, because we know that, I want to talk today about how to overcome risk aversion. But before we get there, I want to tell you guys something exciting. I just dropped my first ever course on LinkedIn. And this course is called Navigating FOMO in the Workplace. And I worked really hard on it. It's 30 minutes. It's a video course. I made it together with LinkedIn. They produced it. Actually, it was all done remotely. They were like on the other side of these cameras. They sent me all these cameras and things. Three big I think it was five big boxes of stuff that I had to set up in my apartment and they controlled everything remotely, including the teleprompter. And we recorded it back in October and now it's out and it is just really cool. And so go to LinkedIn Learning, type my name or type Navigating FOMO, if you're missing out in the workplace. Check it out. Let me know what you think. I would love to know what you think of the course. FOMO. FOMO. All right, let's talk about how to overcome risk aversion. I got four things to talk about. Number one, study it. Study the thing that you want to do. So one cool thing about Catherine's story, she's an economist, right? She got a PhD in economics, so she knows all about studying. That's what economists do. They study things. And so she took an approach to understanding this industry. And she'd not worked in this industry before, but she got smart on the whole weighted blanket thing. So she was able to go into it with her eyes open and a plan. And I think that's really important because risk aversion when you have a fear of something, part of that is irrational, part of it's totally rational. But the more you study and understand the nature of the risk, the more you can make a fact-based decision that's based on logic and not fear, right? Fear-based decision-making always generates, I would say, not always, I would say always, right? Fear-based decision-making has the tendency to produce suboptimal returns. That's something I believe. And so therefore, the more work you do to understand the nature of that risk, the better off you can figure out if it makes sense for you and you can build the confidence to go out and do something. So that that's number one. Number two, surround yourself with people who are doing the thing that you think you want to do, right? So one big thing that I always tell people when they're looking to become an entrepreneur is go to where the entrepreneurs are. Spend time with entrepreneurs, right? Because the more time you spend with them, you're going to learn about their lives and what they do and the risks are and how they overcame them and what the secrets are and the little hacks and the tricks and all that sort of stuff. And so you have the, the experience of just watching how things are done. Like when you want to learn anything, if you can spend time with somebody who's doing that thing successfully, you're just going to learn from them. It's like apprenticeship, right? So like, I think that's a really important thing to do with entrepreneurs and you can find entrepreneurs everywhere. But of course, if you go hang out at meetups or you just reach out to people, you know, and just say, Hey, would you grab coffee and just tell me what it's like to start a company? Or do you know somebody? I mean, every community has entrepreneurs, right? If you think about what percentage of businesses in a country are small businesses, right? And if you're in a college student, obviously there's tons of opportunities to study, but entrepreneurs are everywhere. You just have to go and find them and spend time with them and say, Hey, entrepreneur, Show me your secrets. Teach me your ways. Number three, do the 10% entrepreneur mindset. And this is a thing like, so Catherine, it's funny, she didn't um, she didn't do this. D despite the fact that I really believe it's the best way to go, she did not start as a 10% entrepreneur. She did not start part-time. She went ahead and she just jumped right in. And so again, I, I think she's been successful, so good for her. And, and, and I'm not saying you can't do that, she did a lot of work, but I often say, listen, just start part-time, figure out if you like it, figure out if your idea makes sense, and then consider going full-time, right? So it's a way to risk mitigate the situation. And finally, 
do something you're fired up about. The more excited you are about it, the more likely you are to just say, you know what, let's do this. And I think Catherine's a great example because, you know, this was about her health and her inability to sleep. And so she wanted to solve a problem that was personal to her. And the more that you can do that with a business, the more you're just going to be able to get over the hump of number one, just spending time on it to like do the work to figure out, is this a good idea or not? Do I want to do this or not? And also just to be able to get to the space where you say, let's do it. So those are the four things. Number one, study it. Number two, surround yourself with people who are doing it. Number three, 10% it. And number four, find something personal that gets you fired up. If you do those things, it'll help you overcome risk aversion. All right, that's my solution. I'm sure you have your own ideas. So feel free to reach out and share, and I will share some of the best ones on a future episode of Faux Mondays. You can reach me at Patrick J. McGinnis on Instagram, at PJ McGinnis on Twitter, and at Let's connect at patrickmcginnis.com on email. All right, everybody. Have a risk, uh, I guess not risk averse week. That wouldn't be good. Have a non risk averse week. And I will see you back here on Thursday on another episode of FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. 